So you can have quick access to them. Yeah. Brilliant. We've got, we've got Sergio in the room. Hi there, Sergio. Good to have you with us today. What was that again, Mace? Just saying, we've got uh, Sergio with us um, at the minute. A little bit early, but that's all good. So hi. And we've got Aldo as well has just joined us. So hi, guys. Hey, guys. Hi, everyone. We'll do a proper good morning, won't we? Can you guys see the attendee list there, Colin and, uh, and Dave? Uh, let me just have a look. I can see participants, yeah. Okay. Yeah, I can see, yeah, I can see attendees, yeah. It's fine. Yeah, got it. And I've spotlighted you guys as well, so you should be full screen yeah. now as well. Okay. Always give it to the uh, top of the hour, and then we can uh, we can get going. You ready for us to go? Yeah, yeah, absolutely. Go, go for it. Hi there, John. John's just joined us, but um, yeah, go, go ahead, guys. Uh, and just to say to everyone that we, we have got the the Q and A open, so feel free to fire any questions across that you have for the guys, um, and we'll do our best to to triage those and get those answered for you. Um, but over to to you guys. Good morning, everyone, and thank you for joining the digital manufacturing webinar from Smart Technologies and OPEX Digital today. We're at OPEX Digital's headquarters, and I'm Colin Birchall. I am an enterprise business B2B manager for Smart in the UK, and I've been joined by... Uh, Dave Powell, welcome everybody. I'm the CEO of OPEX Digital. Um, we're glad to present to you today. So why do we why do we think about doing this webinar? Well, here at Smart, we've we've always been a, a world leader in supplying interactive displays into uh, businesses uh, globally. But we've started to see a trend where there is more and more manufacturing getting in touch with us about how they can use the interactive displays not just in the meeting room but also on shop floors and in comm centers in factories. And that's that's all around what's going on with uh, digitization of uh, technology which is um, they're digitizing their, their processes and their practices in the factories. Yeah. So, Dave, you've, you've worked in factories for nearly 20 odd years, maybe 30 years. years, years, sorry, yeah, yeah. Sorry, just, um, years. Well, tell us yeah. why, why are businesses, why are manufacturing specifically digitizing their processes, their integration processes? Well, traditionally, a lot of the software activities happened in the back office, you know, for material management and stuff like that. Uh, but they've missed the activity on the shop floor. So it's been generally paper-based around production and quality performance. So a manager would be walking around focusing on how the performance is on a flip on a on a check sheet of some yeah. sort. However, um recently they've done plenty of studies about the transformation of digital exercises on shop floors. And you see that a 42% improvement in productivity comes from digitalization. Yeah. And I saw recently in the Forbes article, only 24% of companies are to start this journey at the moment, aren't yeah. So it's, it's very early in the state. So we're at the forefront of this activity to you know, to try and get um, and basically penetrate yeah. those those industry sectors. And obviously, we've we've worked together. I think the thing that's for important for us is we've seen uh, this increase, but it's got to have a use case in the factory, hasn't it? So smart partnering with uh, opex digital has been a great partnership because our technology and your technology has worked really yeah. well to sort of bring that sort of process along with people because it's the touch screen and, and and all that great thing and obviously the power of the pen as you call it yeah yeah it's exactly the power pen. so basically we normally have a bit of a kickback when we're trying to implement digital systems in businesses because they like the collaboration factor with a pen yeah so it makes it more interpersonal with the people however with the strength of of you know of um, the smart system, we do have the opportunity to still in, interact with the people and start problem solving. Yeah, that's so, great. So you know, it's it's really it's it's very you know interactive, very um, focused and communication driven. Okay, 
Brilliant. So I think at this point, what we'll do, why don't we share our, our bigger screen? Because you can see us right now, we're working on a, a 55 inch uh, smart MX Pro series. We also do these in 65, 75 and 86. So we've got quite a range of sizes to fit different environments, whether it's on the shop floor or in the, in the CEO's office or wherever. But we're going to share the screen with you so you can see the software firsthand to see how it's set up. OK, so what we're going to do, just let's go into share. And we'll share the screen. Okay, share, and you should be seeing that screen now. Okay, so Dave, tell us how, how, how typical. What's a, a typical setup in a in a uh, a factory? You know, like road mapping and things like that. Basically, so basically when we build the system, the system is is the process and flow is built by the clients itself. So we give that functionality that we have multiple projects. So if you have multiple sites. This can actually, you know, drive you to, to, you know, have full communication across all environments. So we've got one example of a company we're talking to at the moment. We've got 150 plants when global. Yeah. So and they want to see the performance of their operational excellence solution and rollouts across the whole lot at a glance. And this fits that solution. Digitizing that, I suppose you can go quite granular. If you if you see a factory that's having maybe some trouble implementing certain practices or policy deployments, someone in Germany could have a look at what's going on in a factory in Malaysia or something like that, essentially because it's all digital and cloud-based. Exactly, and it's, it's a maturity thing. So, you know, if we're at the very early stage of an operational excellence transformation, we can use this as an implementation tool. However, if you're a mature business, you can use it as a governance tool. Okay. So it's got two, two ends to it. So it's all about data-driven thinking way. It's about what we call lean thinking. Okay, brilliant. So, so you know, for as an example, we can see here, we've got a, a business and uh, we can see from this glance, this is just a headline view. We can see what the progress of a plan, if they created a plan, you can see the project scores, which is the implementation of their, um, their lean their operational activities. We can see the number of users, the number of project comments, because it's a communication tool. We can see the number of escalated items because it's an escalation tool for any problems at a glance. And active KPIs, which is key for driving problem solving and solutions. And then we could also capture Kaizen savings, which you know allows us to capture the benefits of anything we do in a you know continuous improvement. So we use a lot, you use a lot of Japanese terminology yeah. in um in lean and obviously. I, I don't speak Japanese, although I, I know people can't understand what I'm saying half the time. But it, what does Kaizen mean? That's kind of important in the manufacturing world. Yeah, isn't it? Kai, Kai, Kaizen breaking down typically means Kai meaning change and Zen for the better. Okay. So come together, English simple translation would be continuous improvements. Got you. So, okay. Okay. So once we, we set up a project, so that would be the first stage of setting up a project. We can then enter the project and we be your company or super user. We then start to create these departments or areas, and that's depicted by themselves. So that would be an exercise to say, okay, how does our organization really hang together? Yeah. So, and there's a lot of information in the background for this. So this, let's say, is a headline view. We do have a, you know, roadmap. This is the level of detail that is in the background of the system. So we've got lean project management, we've got safety focus, we've got workplace design, factory design layouts, all the lean foundation tools just in time for your logistics, built in quality to improve the quality systems. And then we've got a big focus on people and culture. And that's going through their processes essentially yeah. as well, isn't it? Yeah, exactly. So that's driving the processes. So in reality, what we're trying to establish is, you know, a system which is fully communicative, but also a learning tool, an education tool. Yeah. Okay. From this viewpoint, you can see we've got some highlighted issues. So we've got escalation. So we can see this as an escalation tool. So anytime there's something escalated, whoever the person has logged on, they can access the logon to see what's been escalated to them. And we've also got a general com com communication button. So we can start to see what's actually going being communicated within the team. And this works really well in terms of when you're doing that comm session at the beginning of the day with your, your group, where you just tap it on here and it gives you a really easy breakdown of where they are on the on the factory floor at exactly. that time. It's that communication handover system. So, yeah, yeah it's a full, full involvement from the team. So when we have an issue, you can also see who the, the members within the team is at a glance. But when we have got an issue, you know, we are trying to drive implementation through the, the 10 the elements of lean. So what we every different area has a different set of attributes. 
So we will just select which attributes are required for that department, or not we, the CPUs and the, and the company we're working with, we'll select. So for this example, we've got a maintenance department, and we can see we've selected some certain attributes and some which haven't been selected are just are grayed out so not to be used. First issue I see when, when we go into factories, in the absence of a consultant, you've got to set the scene. So people will be saying, okay, what is the issue? Um, why, why am I doing TPM? What is total productive maintenance? What does it mean to me? Most of you guys won't know what total productive maintenance is. So we, we built in avatars. TPM is a vital ingredient of the foundation of lean manufacturing. So uh, we've got these all, all running through the system. Standardized work is a method for teams to uh, document. First reason is, is to set that scene. So if you move the myth, it's, you know, it's not about headcount reduction. It's about improving processes. Yeah. Next stage is, okay, now I know what it is. How do, you, how do we do it? So we've got a series of documents, help documents all the way through, right the way through for the whole of the system to educate the people again in, you know, in how to implement these simple steps. And I guess that goes back to what you said before, if they're already running a, a lean system and they're looking to digitize, if that, they've got that documentation, that can be uploaded here with like their own 5Ss and things like that. Type exactly. thing, so we do have a document control process here. So we try to make it as a paperless activity. So a lot of shop floors now are scattered with paper and standards and so on. They can become dog-eared, they go missing, they can become fire hazard. There's plenty of reasons why, you know, that can, they can be um, basically damaged or, you know, or torn. So we've created a system where you can actually update, update all your current standards into the solution. So everything's available at a glance. So you mentioned before you touched on um, how do we educate? Obviously, you've got the avatar, avatars there that do that, the AI and the help documents. But you also talk about things like built-in academies and how you can use some of the smart interactive tools to educate as well. So Exactly. So initially, we have an academy to take people on the journey so people can access. With, the, with our system, we give a free yellow belt and green belt um, certification in lean, lean management and lean um, practical you know, solutions. So... But we've also, you know, when we do have problems in the system, we've got the ability to use the smart system. Okay. The smart system. And one of the reasons why we partner with smart is because they have a lot of built-in templates already established. So if we were to, you know, to look at some of these templates, in essence, we can do flow diagrams, we can do value stream mapping. And, um, you know, we do problem solving and si simply just get involved. You know? There's problems, we can just integrate, problem solve with the team, and then save that into our escalation tickets. And you know, the funny thing is, Dave, I saw you just doing that on the whiteboard there, right? And I've been into so many factories where I walk in and the comms room, and the first thing I see is that big, um, what do you call it? SQCD, shop no, no, management. No, the uh, image you just had. Oh, on the Ishikawa fishbone diagram. Yeah, so we call it fishbone, but a lot of yeah. manufacturers will say, Here's our Ishikawa, yeah, and I go, you know, yeah. so that is a, a really great, uh, that's a really great tool. Yeah, we can show it integrated into the system as well. So we're still in the maintenance departments. We can flow down past all our KPIs, and we'll touch on that moves in a moment. So we can see we've got escalation tickets against this department. So if we click on one of the issues, we're going to type in the detail and allocate it to a person. Yeah, we can view any brainstorming activities. So straight away at a glance. We've got our issues and problem solving activities all stored into the solution. So it becomes one, one all inclusive you know, solution. So it doesn't become uh, something that we're having to go to separate things all the time. You can actually access that. And it means that people who may not necessarily got access to white, uh, to, to a smart board with a smart board software, they can actually view the problem solving activity that you've done maybe at a management level, yeah. what's been going on in the shop floor. Exactly, yeah. exactly. But one of the drivers for this also is that, you know, trying to implement change and solutions. And these are enablers to improve your KPIs. So the enable, way we do that is by an, an asking what we call reasoned questions. So we've got a level of questions that we've got to ask all the way through. And it's very in-depth. It's over 500 questions in, in the solution. So I drive you towards having that operational excellence environment. As I said before, to have an implementation or a governance solution. And simple enough, they just score themselves accordingly, and that changes to that scores on the system. But if we have a concern, we can create an action. 
which allows you to raise your, raise your ticket. We could just write in a general communication. And when we talk about writing, it is it is fairly straightforward because we obviously we have got the, we could use a keyboard if yeah. that's your comfort zone. We do have the uh, Smart Inc. text recognition tool. So uh, needs attention, I wrote a needs attention here. So again, it's that power of the pen. It's what people are familiar with. Yeah. Uh, should recognize my handwriting, press the tick, drop it into the dialogue box, and then it's obviously updated the platform really, really exactly. easily. So, and then that's saved into the comments. Yeah. However, we also get the option to create the Kaizen, and, and all that's doing is indicating a different type of ticket to drive a Kaizen event, to continuous improvements event. So get a team together, start problem, problem solving the solution, and share it across your organization. One other key attribute is that it's time stamped. So if people, you know, are meant to be using this on a daily basis as a supervisor and management, you can check and see. You're going to see those entries, yeah. Yeah, yeah. yeah. if they, they've got some interface with the system on a regular basis. Yeah. So driving this is about KPIs. It so is, yeah. Creating KPIs, pretty simple. So we can see we've got a variety of KPIs here. They can be either updated manually in, within the board, or we can have an open API key, which means information is flowing in from the equipment that you've got. Okay. Place. So it's create KPI, very simple, create KPI. We can either customize one or we can use some of the standard ones already in, type in your details, press create, and you get the function already. Yeah. We then got options to set target lines, um, add any you know guidelines or anything to policy in, deployments policy and, yeah. and so on. So yeah. So Dave, can I just ask you, because there's going to be people out there who are uh, looking at this and going, oh yeah, that's a graph and I've seen that in Excel. But how is this happening right now in manufacturing? When you go around manufacturing, like, how is it? It's not appearing digitally, is it? No, no, no. It's, 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 you know, it could be either printed off Excel spreadsheets. It could actually handwritten documents. Um, a lot of them are coloured in with felt pens. Yeah. It becomes quite messy and quite tedious. And just a lot of times you go to a meeting and, and they, they haven't got a pen available. Yeah. You know, I mean, just being able to touch and see where we are up to with a comment or whatever, yeah. that makes that so much easier, so, so much more intuitive that you would find that people are used to using the sort of technology as tablets and phones at the moment. Yeah, well, you know, we, we've got a lot of different functions down the side here, but you know, if we can go to our display mode, this is what we should be viewing on the shop floor. This can be live at any time. So we could go to maintenance departments, for example, straight away, we've got the SQCDP, which means safety, quality, cost, delivery, and people, which is a standard format across most industries now. That's the first thing you ones. see, isn't it, when yeah. you walk on a shop floor? Yeah. This is where we're at. Oh, yeah, another Japanese gamber or whatever, you know, but it's where you're at, isn't it? So Exactly. So, you know, and to update this as a daily meeting, it's still got to be updated manually. So we just press pause, then it gives us the option to, you know, to decide whether we're on or off target. And that's a judgment based on how you're measuring safety. Some companies, for example, might measure near misses, some might measure accident three days. Yeah, so, but you calibrate that to whatever day, yeah. however they practice the the, the SQ CDP yeah. uh, metrics, isn't it? Exactly, so, you know, and, that, and that's, that, you know, we can do a blended approach to this. So not only do we offer the software, we can also offer the support, yeah. either Zoom or physical consultancy support. So we've talked about how it is supposed problem solving because we looked at the whiteboard and how that escalates, which is great, which is what we get asked about a lot. Well. Does this have a report function on the back of it, Dave? Does it, would it allow yeah, us to do yeah, reports yeah. as well? So we go back to our areas. So we have a reporting function here. So we can start to do stat, um, handover reports or shift reports or monthly reports. You just select which areas you're looking at to do a report on. And, and again, these are the areas that you created at the beginning, which is a very simple method, just add area. Um, type in your comments for your handover, be it safety, quality, cost, delivery, all the details against each one. Decide what you're going to add, any graphs or KPIs, any action list or any images. Yeah. Yeah. Well, just generate reports. Just right? generate reports. And as you can see, the reports. So this would be in a report that we'd see at management level, maybe. In, yeah. Exactly. The management level, you know, a handover. And you can start to see then, okay, these are all the open actions, see detail, you can see the status of the areas with the implementation. So again, and it can be printed, but however, it's more of a, a system aware. We don't yeah. want to print, but if they want to keep it for, you know, future reference, they can print not in that function. Okay. Now, the other thing I was going to ask you, Dave, and this is a question I get asked a lot, can it measure OEE? Because whenever we go to a factory, the first thing they say, oh yeah, that's great, and that does what we want, but we need OEE. Can you tell us a bit about what you, what you yeah, do on that? Yeah, we've got a partner that's which we work alongside, and it's called Evercon. That gives us the option to have live OE reporting. So, so this is 
Absolutely. That little bit of a demonstration. So this is a so just solution. before you say about that thing, what is OE? Let's 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 break it down. What what does that mean? Sorry for, yeah, for our people who watch it out there. So OE is overall equipment effectiveness. So you're measuring the availability, the efficiency, and the quality of of your production system around the equipment. Kind of crucial, isn't it? It yeah. makes what it's what's making the factory tick a lot of exactly. time, isn't it? So, so if there's a failure, for example, the team leader would be updating yeah. this live as it goes so they have they have this viewpoint machine stops instantly it's recording bedtime yeah so green times you know going in you know so bedtime we, we have an issue we have the reason you know let's say it's a technical issue um machine failure and we could add some detail if we wanted what the machine failure was press save and straight away it's recording key factor for this is then this allows us then to have our um reports to allow for active you know focused um, activity on problem solving for the maintenance departments on and quality departments on how we're going to make things better yeah. for the production flow. And again, it's all about flow. I mean, we can use the smart thing to discuss this live in a, on, on the platform, but if they, if they didn't want to do that, because obviously you might touch something you don't want to, if you want to go in here, um, we've also got our capture tool, which allows us to do our capture, do a, a full screen capture, and that's then uh, sent to our whiteboarding application as well. Again, that could be another discussion point that we have with our team about what's going on on that particular assembly exactly. hall on a particular day, isn't it? Okay. And if that was a major concern, we could also save that image into our action list as well, yeah. to our tickets. So I've got one last question for you, Dave, because I know we're, we're running short on time, uh, but we want to do a QA. and a um, The great thing about this, this is cloud-based, yeah. isn't it? And it doesn't need um, a specific piece of software to be installed onto PCs. Yeah. Tell us a little bit about what, how, it, how it runs at the moment. So, yeah, it, it is a cloud-based system. So, you know, you just log on. As long as you've got a browser available to you, you can access this, this system. We're using Google Chrome here yeah. today, aren't we? Yeah. Which is probably a, a well-used yeah, well well, one, isn't it? Yeah, well-established, stable system. Yeah. So, yeah, but it'll work on any browser. But, we, you know, we, we prefer Google Chrome ourselves. So. Brilliant. Well, thanks for that, Dave. That, I really appreciate us going through that with and how we're working with Smart. And the, we, right now, Smart, are, we are very active in this market. We're actually talking to quite a lot of manufacturers about how they're digitizing processes. And it's normally come out of a probably a meeting about the, the We've gone into talk to them about their meeting rooms and what's going in their meeting rooms, but they're now starting to ask us, say, hey, we might be able to use this technology on, on the production line, or we might be able to use it in comm centers. And with the, the smart range, we do have the Smart MX Pro range, which includes the 55, 65, 75, and 86 inch display, all with five year on site warranties. We have the 6000S and we have the new QX Pro range, which has got more advanced inking features, more advanced touching features, which is available in 65, 75, and 86. Again, we're a five year warranty, but that does include a video conferencing camera as well. So if you wanted to have two way conversations from the shop floor to the boardroom, you can do that as well. So we have a, a solution. We have the software to fit with what you're doing with, with, with your customers. And especially, there's not many applications out there that have those lean. Um, yeah, not, not, not so fully it? integrated. No, no, not so fully There's integrated. a couple of players out there. You know, a lot, a lot of them may be looking at Power BI, but it's too too slow. Yeah. This is an instant update. So it's all about what we call three-minute management. Yeah. So you should be able to instant react to your business within three minutes at a glance and seeing your performance. But we'll say, Colin, one of the key points from the board as well is when we've been to a few clients, big clients, and they talk about security of the system. Yeah. The boards. And if you mentioned about the chip safe, which is yeah, key. so a, 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 thanks for reminding me on that. Yeah. Yeah. Mention, so a lot of our products are chip safe. So that means that the the, the chips that are manufactured that aren't going to impact on anyone's security policies. So we have we have in the past um, seen where a display might go in, it might have a particular chipset made in a particular country, and a, a say a US firm will say we can't touch that our products are completely chip safe and we've been working on that for 18 months so the whole range of stuff that's coming yeah. through right now makes us chip safe as well. that fits with a lot of our clients who have you know have got those concerns over there they have yeah but yeah it's it's that professional you know yeah, we need the integrity that. of the of the products. And it's a tech, isn't yeah. it? And obviously with them integrating with if, if your clients are using Crestron as well, our systems are fully integrated with Crestron. Yeah. So appreciate we we've, we've talked quite a bit here, Dave. Yeah. Um uh, Ian, is there any questions from the um is there any questions from the people who've attended the webinar today? Hi there, chaps. Uh, yeah, we've just actually had uh, a note through from John Dennis. So great smart technology, of course. 
management culture and work worker behavior needs to change to leverage the power of the technology. Can you comment on your experience in educating management and workers on behavior and culture before they even learn the technology? Yeah. Hi, John. It was good to meet you last week. <laughs> so, uh, yes, John, John, you know, we're built into the system. We do have uh, an element around what we call the people function. So um, we're in the people function. Sorry. We enter one of the areas from select people. It's, it's all about coaching and education of your leadership team in how to manage a culture. Yeah, so there's plenty of different ways of, um, of approaching and understanding how um, the, the management team react at a standard way, a standard approach to behaviours and, and systems and issues that happen on a daily basis within a business. And as I said, you know, we do have uh, the help documents around that to support all that education. So within people and culture, we, we can train and support your people in how coaching and mentoring supports. Okay, what about situ situational leadership, effective meetings, you know, all the general activities right the way down to um, Genshi Genbuchi, which is what we mean, shop floor, walk, and walk the floor, talk and the talk, and so on with your team. Quite a relevant point John raises there as well, because a lot of companies spend a hell of a lot of money on that coaching and that training with consultants. It's quite expensive, yeah. isn't it? Yeah. Yeah, exactly. And this takes that away from it as well, so it could save the money in the long term. Yeah, it does. And, you know, we did capture quite a bit of it within the Lean Academy function as well about yeah. you know, situational leadership and, and behaviours and so on. Physical thinking, that's yeah. thing. yeah. Exactly. Any other questions, Ian? Uh, no, not for the time being. I don't think so. I think it's just uh, just John's one, which I think you guys answered uh, expertly. Um, but no, I haven't seen anything else pop through. Okay. Well, I'd like to add... Um, Dave has given a real whistle-stop tour of this application today. He's, yeah. he's, he's gone on the touchstones. So if it's something that you are interested in for yourself or for customers or for, for clients, um, please feel free to reach out to Dave or myself. Um, we'd love to engage with you. We'd love to maybe do do a longer demo, maybe a bit more in-depth. I know the, the demos that we've been doing so far, a lot of people ask around questions around customization, how this can fit yeah. specifically with their business, which isn't a problem. We can, we can do that. Um, so, yeah, please reach out to us. We'd be happy to talk to you. Uh, but on behalf of myself and Dave at OPEX Digital and me at Smart Technologies, I'd like to thank you for joining us on this webinar today, and we look forward to speaking to you again in the future. Thank you. And, and just to reiterate what Colin said, we probably touched on maybe about 50 60% of the system today so uh, you know it would be a beneficial beneficial to you all to uh, look give me a call or you know drop me an email or a line and we'll, we can spend a lot more time on the whole system thank you okay thanks a lot